Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 8 for chapter 3. In this video, we'll take several examples where the characteristic equation has complex roots. So the first example will result in something called perfect oscillation and you will see the reason very soon through the solution. Okay, so we want to solve the following initial value problem, which is given as y double prime plus 4y equals 0. And the initial values are given at y at pi over 6 is 0 and y prime at pi over 6 is 1. Okay, so um, first step is to set up the characteristic equation. This will give us r squared plus 4r is 0, which is here. And that's an easy one to solve. Um, move the 4 to the right hand side, you get negative 4, and therefore you have two roots which are pure imaginary, plus or minus 2 times i. Okay, so we write out the real part and the imaginary part for this um, complex roots. So lambda is 0 and mu is 2. And then we can form the general solution. Um, since it's pure imaginary, we'll just have sine and cosine. So the general solution is cosine 2t times a constant c1 plus sine 2t times another constant c2. And these two constants are arbitrary and to be determined by the initial values. Okay, so let's now fit in the initial conditions. So one of the initial conditions involves in y prime, so let's work that out first. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then we have the constant 2 coming out. And then the derivative of sine is cosine, and then we have a constant 2 here. Okay, so let's put t equal pi over 6 in the expression for y. This will give us c1 plus cosine pi over 3, because it's 2t here, plus c2 sine of pi over 3. And let's put in the numbers for these two sine and cosine value. This one is half, we get half c1, and this is square root of 3 over 2, so we get that, times c2 equals 0. So one equation for the constant c1 and c2. And the other one will be obtained by the y prime at pi over 6. So take this expression and set t to be pi over 6, and then 2t is pi over 3, we get this one coming from this term by setting 2t is pi over 3, and then this one coming from this term by putting 2t equal pi over 3, okay? And then computing these sine cosine number, this one gives me square root of 3 over 2, and this one is half, so we get a second equation. So we see that we have two unknowns, c1 and c2, and we have two um, linear equations, and we know how to solve. Okay, so I will skip the detail of solving um, these two equations, and then I'll give you the answer. And uh, you can pause and work it out if you like. So we have c1 is negative square root of 3 over 4, and c2 is 1 over 4. Okay, so we can now plug these two numbers in and uh, write out the solution. Put it in C1 here and put it C2 here. And then we see that inside the solution we only have sine and cosine. And then sine and cosine are periodic functions, so and the value changes between 0 and 1, so this gives us a periodic oscillation. And uh, a function involves only sine and cosine um, without a, a variable coefficient on its amplitude, meaning with constants of its amplitude. These are called perfect oscillations, and these functions are called simple harmonic 
functions and these motions called simple harmonic motions so, so many fancy names for th that okay our next example um, will be a problem where um, the um, amplitude of the oscillation will change okay and let's look at the problem first here's our problem y double prime plus 2y prime plus 801y equals 0 with initial condition y0 is 1 y prime 0 is 0 okay so the procedure for solving this equation remains the same we first write the characteristic equation which we get here by putting r square and r and the 1 and then we solve this to find the two roots and we found that the two roots are negative 1 plus minus 10 i so it's a complex um, conjugate roots so let's write out the real part which is negative 1 and the imaginary part which is 10 okay once we have that we can form the general solution it's just the formula we derived earlier so exponential function to the lambda t which lambda is negative 1 times the sum of sine and cosine with the mu in front of t and then c1 and c2 are arbitrary constant and then we will need to find the constant c1 c2 using initial condition and the y prime is needed so let's work that out so this y prime looks a bit more complicated because we have two terms an exponential times a sine cosine term so we need to use the product rule okay we can differentiate this first and get a negative et times the same thing here uh, sorry i missed the um constant in front of t these shall be all 10 t okay so um this is the product um, rule that gives us the first term differentiating this one and copying that and then we can copy that and differentiate this term which gives us a negative 10 in front of this and give us a 10 in front of that it becomes cosine here and sine here okay let's fit in the initial condition so y0 equals 1 what does that give us so we put t equals 0 this term is 1 and this is 0 this is 1 so we just get c1 which shall be 1 and then for the second one y prime at 0 so this will be 1 and then this is 0 and this is c1 which is 1 so it's just negative 1 and then here it gives me 1 times and that's 0 and that's 1 that's 10 c2 so 10 c2 and that shall be 0 so remember this negative 1 is obtained by already plugging in c1 is 1 okay and then here we can solve we can get c2 is 0 0.1 okay we can put these two numbers in and uh, we can get the expression for the solution and that is um, here okay let me fix that okay so of course they have 10 in front of the t okay so how does the solution look like what do you think the solution will look like um, looking at the solution we can see that it's a product of two functions and uh, the second function here is uh, the summation of a sine and cosine and we know that will give us some oscillation with fixed amplitude if we did not have the first term and we can interpret the first term as an envelope around this oscillation which gives it its amplitude so we will have some oscillation here with uh, some um, period and the amplitude of that is uh, bounded by this in absolute value 
Okay, so in fact, um, it, you can give this function to a plotting tool, let's say MATLAB, and plot it for t from 0 to 4, and then you will see that the solution um, looks like this solid line here. It oscillates, and then the amplitude becomes smaller and smaller, and in fact, I can also plot the function e to the negative t up here and the negative e to the negative t down here and you see that these two actually provide exactly an envelope for this oscillation to happen in between. Okay. So such an oscillation is called a decaying oscillation, decaying due to the fact that the amplitude is an exponential decay function. Okay, and let's repeat again. So the sine and the cosine part gives us the oscillation and the term it multiplies with e to the negative t part gives the amplitude which is decay. So here you can see if we wait a long time then the envelopes will all go to zero and therefore even though you're oscillating your amplitude approaches zero and the solution goes to zero asymptotically as t goes to infinity. Okay, so let's look at um, another example where um, the oscillation, um, the amplitude of the oscillation goes in the other direction. Okay, let's say we want to find the general solution of this equation. Y double prime minus Y prime plus 81.25Y equals zero. Okay, so we follow the procedure, set up characteristic equation, R square minus R plus that, and uh, find the two roots, and which we get is 0 0.5 plus minus 9i. So complex number, so let's identify the real part, lambda is 0 0.5, and the imaginary part, mu, is 9. And then it's very easy to um, write out the general solution, just putting in the formula e to the lambda t here, and then sine cosine of 9t and adding up but multiply by constant c1 and c2. Well, so the interesting question now is um, how does the solution look like for some c1 or c2 given number? Um, we see that um, this part will offer the oscillation from the discussion we have had so far and then the amplitude of the oscillation is determined by this term it's multiplied with and here this is an exponentially increasing function okay so what do you think the solution look like think about it Okay, so um, probably you are thinking the amplitude is growing, so the oscillation will grow larger and larger. In fact, that's true. So here I give a typical graph um, for some number of C1, C2. You can just put in any number of C1, C2, and you can plot it using, for example, MATLAB, and they will behave um, um, qualitatively in the same way as this graph. So. These dotted lines are the exponential function, and here is the negative of the exponential function because oscillation goes both ways. And then you have the oscillation going between, but the amplitude grows exponentially in time. Okay, so um, what is the asymptotic behavior? Well, the solution will not approach something asymptotically as time goes to infinity and in fact when time gets larger and larger the y value will oscillate between negative infinity to positive infinity so this if this shall be um, some physical model you're modeling a physical quantity that you are measuring then um, things will break down 
Okay, let's do a summary, conclusion, whatever you want to call about um, behavior of uh, solutions for um, compact loops for the characteristic equation. So from our discussion, it is not difficult to see in, in general, that is the sign of the real part, which we call lambda, that will decide the type of the oscillation. If lambda is zero, then you have pure imaginary roots and you have sine and cosine function in your solution. These are called perfect oscillation without changing the amplitude in time. And then second, if lambda shall be negative, the real part of the complex root is negative, then we see that the amplitude of the oscillation will decay and go down to zero. These are called decaying oscillation. And on the other hand, if lambda shall be bigger than zero, then it's a growing amplitude and for the oscillation. Okay, so um, a even um, quicker way to get a hold on the type of oscillation you're having. So if you already know it's going to be a complex root, then you know the real part is uh, negative b over a. So the sign of the real part will follow the sign of the, the ratio of b over a. Just a quick way. Okay, so um, that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to see you next time.